to you. Just tell you. Tell us your safe cost. Tell us your safe cost story. My safe cost story. I met Peter. That was 2011 April, yes. mid April, some kind of a conference. Yes. And then at the conference, I was very moved. Uh, it was originally IT conference. The people in IT industry they get gather and talk about IT stuff. You know, at most IT stuff. But because of the three one one three eleven, they changed the topic to uh, earthquake and the disaster thing. And then all of them were so uh, how to say they they love to volunteer things. And they are so called nerd in general. Like, we, you know, when they go out, they are called nerd or otaku. But uh, deep inside, they are very sincere and they are very happy to help, happy to be, uh, be helpful for the society. And then I was very moved at the conference. And then I met Peter. Peter was one of them. He already invented this. Uh, Pancake type of, uh, right. no, I, iPhone type? iPhone type. iPhone yes. type of uh, big guy, uh, you know, the, the original Geiger counter. At that time, we didn't have Geiger counter in the market, even though uh, Akihabara or wherever, there's no way we can get it. And then if, if you want to get one, uh, that might be very uh, miserable one or like not really functioning one, but still cost like a thousand dollars or more than that. It was really ridiculous, but at the time he was already invented, and then I was very uh, surprised there was such a big person <laughs> here in front of me. So I, I, you know, I told Peter, uh, Peter, if there is anything I can do, I would, I would like to help. And then, then uh, instead, can you make one for me? <laughs> Yes. That was the beginning. <laughs> that was the beginning, and and so and and ever since Kiki has been a, a key part of our of our community, and she has specifically have helped out a lot, helping us to communicate between all the people that we met along the path in Fukushima mm -hmm. and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Also, we have done a lot of reach out in Japan, and you've always been amazing uh, support in in doing that. I think everybody who knows SafeCast in Japan knows Kiki and knows Nene. Uh, you're part of, you know, we, we just talked to Big Watanabe and Small Watanabe and Kiki and Nana. We, these are these are now legends of, of Safe Pass Japan. And it's so great to see you here. And and Nana actually is the first dog that carried the Big Gaigi around, right? You have the photo, you found it. She's actually a nuclear dog. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's see if we can show it on the camera. Uh, maybe we can get a, maybe a little bit dark, but, the, but these, these modern cameras are amazing. Is that it? There it is. If you look really carefully, you will see <laughs> Nene is 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 carrying a big Aggie there, right? <laughs> and uh, and how many years is this ago? Must be five years. Eight, ago? Eight. No, more than that, right. like seven years or so. Right. So then, 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 two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen, something like that. She was seven years old at that time. Now oh. she's fifteen. Oh, <laughs> going still strong. She's one of the most <laughs> gentle dogs I know. She's yeah. such a sweetie. Yes, she is. She, she is, is right. And yeah. and I and I think at the at the beginning of the accident, I remember that there were a lot of dog owners who were really worried that their mm -hmm. dogs would get exposed to radiation, specifically because they were closer to the ground and the ground is polluted. So, so and then you know we helped other dog owners also to measure. Uh, you know, it's not easy to measure, uh, you know, an, 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 uh, a human or, or, or an animal, but we help them to, to check if the paws were contaminated. And also we provide a lot of people information about, you know, what real risks are there and how to go about. But uh, I'm so happy to see Nene here today. Uh, our hearts are warm. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to show Nene to people too. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's <laughs> thank you all. She's right. thank you all. <laughs> As you know, in Japan, people and animals grow really old and they just keep on going. It's just amazing. Earlier today, we had Professor Kurokawa, which we said we wouldn't name his age, as you can look it up. But uh, I will be very happy if I look that good when I'm uh, 65. <laughs> so so uh, it's it's amazing. So Stick is here. Is Stick here? Stick. Hey. Hey. Okay. Hey. So. So, so, uh, Stig, welcome to the show, and uh, 
uh, uh, you know, just stay here, Kiki. Stay, stay, stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit of you know, we're we're as we're driving to the next destination, uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, we have we have quite some people that have uh, signed up for the Zoom conference, and we want to shout out to some of some of them uh, to just say hi and thank you and and stick. You know, <laughs> what is your safe car story? Well, I think I was the first car that drove with the big Aigi to Fukushima. Uh, I think so too. We were to, and funny yeah. enough, we were together. I think in, in two thousand <laughs> April two thousand eleven, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. As I mentioned earlier, you know, I never drove in a car, and I had a big guy. And you had the car, so it was very easy <laughs> to sort that out, yeah, right? That's a good time, yeah. And for you know, a little bit introduction of, of Stig. Stig is uh, is a good old friend of mine, and we share one passion, which is the passion of music and and audio equipment. Stig is uh, the founder uh, of a uh, small audio company here in Japan, Lyra Connoisseur, that makes the, the pickup elements for record players. And uh, it's it's an art in itself to make those. And, and that's how I met Stig. But when the accident happened, we teamed up to, to do various things. But also Stig, uh, after driving the Big Aigi to, to in Japan and bringing it to Norway, uh, you also did another thing. You became Dustig. Tell us a little right. bit about that. Dustig, yeah. So with my with my wife, we blogged quite a bit on, on uh, what has happened, what had happened in Fukushima. You know, to pick up information uh, that wasn't normally in newspapers and things. So so we tried, you know, to uh, blog about things that we found in Japanese and get that over to an English audience. On how people really felt. Yes, and a lot of people followed followed those stories because you guys did an amazing job researching it and and then talking about it. So uh, we hope we, you know we keep on once in a while see the stick back in action. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and so so stick. How 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 are things today? How do you you know look back to ten years after Fukushima and today we're in the age of COVID nope. and new territory. Well, for myself, you know, I've, I've lived in Japan now for about 40 years. So, uh, you know, there's uh, before Fukushima, after Fukushima. At, uh, one of the most things I remember to be called by my embassy after the, the Fukushima explosions, to if I wanted to flee to Norway, you know, they had two airplanes coming in. Would you, would you like to go one way to Norway? And I was thinking about, uh, you know, what am I doing in Japan? What is my life like in Japan? And I, I realized that I'm not going to flee that easily and I'm going to stay. So I, I stayed throughout and, and uh, uh, you know, it, it really made me feel how, how what I really feel about Japan, staying in Japan. And, um, you know, also going many times to uh, Fukushima and uh, to meet the, the good people there. And uh, it's such a wonderful place of uh, Japan, and and uh, to be a part of the recovery. So, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm here, and I will probably stay on till the end of my days. 